The Life Weaver control rework details are here. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the channel. So, this is Aaron Keller, and this is what he says on Twitter. Life Weaver control update next week. New controls. Alt Fire will now fire Thorn Volley. Now, that is a huge change. Now, actually, just before we go into the details on these uh, changes that Aaron is actually outlining... If you watch my video recently that actually showed a workshop mod, which essentially implemented all of this, um, this is basically what they're doing. It's almost a, a carbon copy of those changes. There are some little nuances here and there, but essentially the bulk of the changes are basically from that workshop mod. So yeah, the alt fire now will be your thorn volley. So you'll do damage on alternate fire, primary fire, you'll be healing. There is no longer a weapon swap with this hero which I think is massive and really, really good for the hero. The platform will be replacing dash on ability one. So instead of using your, I play on PC, so I would press shift, which would dash me, that will now put down the platform, which again is a much better change. And also, if I then press that button again, it will cancel the platform so this means you don't have to put the platform down and then press a different button to get rid of the platform which was the case before it was just incredibly clunky design it was it, i don't even know how it made it to live it's just very very strange anyway that's going away so that's a great change now here's the thing dash is being moved to double jump this is pretty much like hanzo yeah again this was covered in the video i made recently again showing off that workshop mod just saying well why isn't the dash just like lunge because that's kind of what it is just make it the same so it is so if you double jump now you will dash so it no longer takes up an ability slot it's kind of almost moved to a passive in, in, in a type of way and then auto reload of thorns has been slowed to compensate now this wasn't in the workshop modification um but this is sort of that give and take mentality right this is quite a big buff for life weaver it's still probably going to be really hard to get value and also they're not touching his uh ultimate here and there's no changes for any of his figures so far so we don't know if they're going to increase his healing or they're just going to leave him like this and see how he fares but i think just being able to go from damage to healing in a much more intuitive way is just going to make the hero better anyway you know it's going to be less confusing aaron does then go on to say this will become the new default with the options to use the old style details on coming balance changes for life weaver will be posted later this week by our lead hero designer gw alec okay so again like i said this give and take mentality they're making him streamlined they're making him easier to use um but to do that they're going to reduce a little bit of his power so he won't auto reload as fast as he used to when he swapped his weapons over um so yeah you know bit of give and take this is what alec dawson says he just says updates to life weaver's control scheme are coming next week balance changes are still being considered we will have more info by the end of this week so you know if you're watching this video the day it went live it's wednesday maybe we'll get some info on this on thursday or friday maybe friday um, we get some info on this so this is good news right you, we can berate the developers all we like and go why did the hero launch like this it was quite obvious it needed to change but they've changed it so yeah you know they've made the right decision here they've made the hero a lot more fluid a lot more streamlined to play and i think that can only be seen as a positive good fast reaction yeah we can debate forever why the hero launched like that very odd uh, you know we can even go down the rabbit hole of like are they seeing <laughs> the, the heroes not being played as much maybe are they not selling as many battle passes because people don't want to play this hero uh maybe this is the worst battle pass because nobody wants this hero you know what i mean it's like well although i do think the skins are pretty good in this battle pass um but anyway yeah this is positive so good job guys <laughs> We also get a matchmaking update. This is pretty cool. So Morgan Madron, who is seriously paladin on Twitter, um, he's a, I believe, is a lead systems or server engineer at Blizzard, and he works on Play Overwatch, specifically on the matchmaker. Um, and he says this, with the changes in Overwatch Season 4 to tie ranks to MMR, we've gotten a nice reduction in wide ranked matches. The widest 25% uh, of ranked matches have been narrow, narrowed by at least one division. And our widest rank matches are now about 15% narrower. So what that basically means is that the rank spread isn't as wide as it used to be. It's actually getting narrower. So that's good because that means, well, players should be of similar skill. You shouldn't be getting somebody who's wildly lower ranked in your team 
than you, right? There's going to be less chance of that happening, which is good. It then goes on to say, how does tying ranks to MMR improve wide matches, you might ask? I'll give you an answer tomorrow, but I want to see if people can figure it out first. So it gives us a bit of homework. <laughs> of course, no one does homework. We just come back tomorrow to see what he says. <laughs> so then he goes on to say, some people guessed, I think this is mostly caused by a shift in player behavior. A bunch of players return for season start and those players are no longer very calibrated. So the amount of uncertainty in the system rises. So what he means is people just don't play, right? You know, you come at the start of the season. And I think this is, a, a, an, I think this is a pretty, I don't know whether this is a negative or a positive for Overwatch into the future, but we're in this nine week cycle. People just come back every nine weeks. They may come back in the middle of a season to see some balance changes. That's kind of it. And I think you get a lot of people stopping by to go, What's a new hero look like? What are the balance changes? And then they don't touch the game again. And you, we sort of got this like big spike of interest and then it just collapses the next day. And then we're just waiting weeks for something else to happen and then it collapses. I don't think it doesn't, well, it doesn't feel to me like it's a very uh, healthy way to sort of keep the player base stimulated. Because, you know, if you have a bad hero launch, which we kind of have had now, have Blizzard seen an impact in their statistics? I don't know. Who knows? Uh, anyway, he then goes on to say, it seems to take a couple of weeks for things to return to normal. Ironically enough, this is a tiny fraction of what an MMR reset would feel like. Really makes you want to try a full reset, doesn't it? He's being quite sarcastic there. Anyways, we've started to understand this problem well enough that I'm hopeful we'll be able to make beginning of season match quality feel better in time for season five. Stay tuned for more details. Now, I do recommend um, checking him out on Twitter if you are interested in like this type of discussion around the matchmaker. I do find it quite interesting. I do like to cover it in my videos, but yeah, it's always going to be something they're working on, uh, the matchmaker, and uh, it's good to get a bit of insight into it. Let's talk about Overwatch League. Um, I'm a fan of Overwatch League, and as most of you guys know, through the inaugural season up until 2020, I was involved with the London Spitfire. Um, I was part of their team, effectively. Not as a player or a coach or anything. I was part of like their marketing team, I guess you could say. Um, I was like a cheerleader, I guess, a glorified cheerleader for the team. Um, yeah, it was really cool to be part of it. It was awesome to see it. So I enjoy Overwatch League. I don't want to say I religiously watch every single game of Overwatch League, and I watched all of the recent um, stuff with the Pro-Am, but I do catch it every now and again. If it's on, I'll fire it up. I'll take a quick look, right? However, there's an issue with this season. Um, there is no Chengdu Hunters. This is a team based in China that is just not a team anymore. And the league have put out this very sort of ambiguous statement. <laughs> and they say this, ahead of our season start, we wanted to share with the community that the Chengdu Hunters, I guess you could call them the Chengdun Hunters, <laughs> are not included in today's schedule announcement as they continue to contemplate the future direction of their team. We will update the community further when we have more information to share. For the upcoming spring knockout stage, there will be six owl teams in the East region and they'll be accompanied by six qualified contenders teams. Right. There's no Chengdu Hunters. Chengdu Hunters put a tweet out and just said goodbye, thank you and goodbye a couple of months ago. You have to remember, Overwatch and all Blizzard games are banned in China. So if you're a Chinese team owner, why do you want to own a team in an eSport that cannot be shown in your country? It makes no sense. It's even worse for Chengdu because there'll be people there going, well, Sly, what about Shanghai? What about Guangzhou? Well, yeah, okay, cool. They've got owners that, again, they've got issues with Blizzard as well. Owners like NetEase and all of that stuff. But the issue with Chengdu is the company that owns them own a streaming platform in China and they are in financial difficulty. So they literally cannot probably afford to run this team. Blizzard can't take over this team because it's based in China, I imagine. And they just there's no infrastructure or nothing for it. So we just end up in this situation where, and that's a, a very simplistic view of this because it'll be some sort of complex situation. But basically, it means there's one less team in the Overwatch League and this is the first of many dominoes to go. We already know that the Stan Kroenke backed um, guard esports are, are gone. So they're not backed by him anymore. He literally got rid of them. Their family got rid of them. They're gone. They operate the LA Gladiators. And so, yeah, they're going to run for this year. But what happens next year? Will they just be gone? Yeah, this is a very worrying time for Overwatch League. So we do get a bit more information. So Silent Chan, who is a part of the staff for Chengdu Hunt, says this. Celebrating the best Overwatch 2 players in the world with you all. Oh, come on, Activision. Where are we? I can't find CN server or the CN stream, which of course is the China stream or server. You show your arrogance and ignorance to us without reservation. It must be tired for writing 
these words right. Now, what he he's obviously very frustrated here, and yeah, you can get that. You know, like I've just said, the game is banned in China. It doesn't look like the game's going to be playable in China for a long, long time. All other Blizzard games are banned in China as well. The parent company is suffering a lot of financial issues, which is probably why the team isn't operating. But even teams that are not suffering financial issues are still got issues with Overwatch League. Because in what world do you invest in a business that maybe isn't giving you the return that you were promised or the return you thought you should be getting? You know, there will be cutbacks that will start coming in. So I understand the frustration here, but I think it's a little bit more complicated than just, oh, it's Overwatch League are bad and Activision are bad. One thing I do want to say about Overwatch League, though, is I don't think the league itself is necessarily bad. It's just in a... I'm going to put this in a very uh, diplomatic way. It's in a transitional phase, the league is. And this year is almost like the last of the old ways, I'd imagine. And what's going to happen next year, I don't know. We're probably going to see a radically different Overwatch League. I think there's some really good innovations this year, especially with the contenders teams coming in. Makes it more interesting. It makes it more spicy to watch new names popping up it's not just the same teams going against each other and you know arguably a lot of it doesn't really matter so there are interesting bits and pieces that are being thrown around throughout the season um i hope some of that persists for next year um and i will be like i said looking forward to watching overwatch league when it kicks off so we should probably talk about that now because uh there's another issue with all of this so this is the schedule um i'm a youtuber i like youtube i also pretty much only watch esports on twitch <laughs> now YouTube has got a really good player because you can use it like a DVR. You can you can just rewind. If you want to get up and go to the toilet, you can pause the stream. If you want to get up and make something to eat, you can pause the stream. Maybe you want to answer the door for that awesome Amazon delivery or whatever you're getting. You can pause the stream and then watch it. Maybe you've missed a cool bit. You can go back and watch it. You can't do that on Twitch. It's not as good. But the chat is better on Twitch. Although the quality of live stream chat is very debatable anyway, especially on <laughs> live events and, and especially on esports events because generally they're heavily moderated and it's just not great. Anyway, look at this. It, it just says YouTube Gaming. Uh, opening weekend, watch on YouTube Gaming. There's no mention of Twitch. Now, what is very strange about this is Call of Duty, the CDL, which is the Call of Duty League, is available on Twitch and YouTube. So we were hoping this was going to be the same case for Overwatch League, available on both platforms. Now, you might be saying, why does this matter and do we even care? Well, a very unique thing is happening with Call of Duty League in that um, one of the old pros is basically uh, hosting a, a watch party stream which is bigger than the actual official stream. And there's a number of other people that do it as well. This really increases the viewership figures. This is something that Valorant does. Now, I'm not saying this is inherently a great thing because this is taking away sort of viewers from the actual stream and putting them onto somebody else's stream. And so generally things like the casters get muted and stuff like that and you're just watching that personality co-stream which i do think is good content because it's all it's like you know i like getting together and watching football right with friends people like doing that it's like watching sports together it's really cool right so i just i would have hoped overwatch would do this they probably will for youtube again the problem becomes there's not that much interest on live streaming in youtube anyway especially compared to twitch especially for the content creators so you look at it and think, well, there could be a number of Twitch streamers who could host some pretty cool live stream um, watch parties, but actually they can't now because, well, it has to be done on YouTube and they won't abandon that platform. So it's a very difficult scenario. This is to break down and go, what is the best thing to do? Well, obviously the best thing would be if, yeah, it was on YouTube gaming, but also it's on Twitch. They'd get more viewers on Twitch. In fact, recently the collegiate um, competition they were running had something like 20,000 viewers on Twitch. Now, I think it's very debatable. These were all actual viewers. I don't know where they were coming from. There was drops enabled or some type of drop thing was going on. Um, but if you join that stream, the chat was not the chat of a stream with 20,000 viewers, let's say. But whatever. There was more viewers on that than there were on the Overwatch League on YouTube. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, it looks like we're going to see another year of this just being YouTube only. And then next year, who knows what will happen. Let me know what you think about all of this in the comments below, guys. Overwatch League is, uh, yeah, like I said, it's something that was integral to my consumption of Overwatch, I guess, and, and like it was part of my, um, well, it was part of my life for a long time, really. I mean, Spitfire won the, the league in the first year. I went all over the world watching the, the finals uh, before the pandemic kicked in. It was cool. It, is, it still is cool to watch this game live, but there's just quite a lot of issues, isn't there? All right, guys, thank you for listening and watching the video. If you did enjoy this, then do consider liking the video. Leave a comment below, and I will catch all of you lovely lot.
on the next video. See you soon.